Um, but yeah, so my name's Kevin Pierce. Uh, my position is the chief ranger for Oceana Dunes District. Uh, so I know that she says she has a lot of history and some background, but some quick background. Oceana Dunes District operates Pismo State Beach as well as Oceana Dunes State Vehicle Recreation Area. So we have two operations within our park. So we are Oceana Dunes District, and I know a lot of attention, a lot of focus of uh, the request for tonight is focused on the SBRA, uh, but I do operate both of those. So in my capacity as the Chief Ranger, I'm in charge of the law enforcement public safety functions. Um, we have uh, our previous, in State Parks World, our area manager is called the District Superintendent. Uh, and so Desiree, she came with me tonight in case I need some help, answer some questions about money, but Desiree is my, our admin chief. So she handles all the personnel on payroll. We had the previous district superintendent. Uh, a lot of you may have known Andy Zilke in the past, and then Andy retired. Brent Marshall got the job as the district superintendent. Brent Marshall transferred to Monterey Districts. He's now managing Big Sur, uh, Monterey State Historic uh, District, and all those parts up there. And since Brent left in October of 2016, uh, the department has been kind of using me as kind of an interim acting district superintendent. So I've been kind of doing both roles. So um, just give you a little background there. So yeah, so Lucia reached out and said she wanted an update um, on the POVP. And I recognize that uh, Lucia and Bonnie, some others were at the February Coastal Commission meeting where we provide the update. And a lot of faces are in the park or in the room right now. And I know that we've been, we've seen you at the public workshops. So a lot of you are already familiar with uh, kind of what's going on, but we are, uh, you talked about, ask about PWP. So the Public Works Plan is a California Coastal Act compliance mechanism, right? It's a long range land use plan. And that's kind of, that's what we're engaged on. We started that process back in 2000, December 2017, our director came down and kind of kicked off the meetings and we've kind of been engaged in these um, scoping and public workshops ever since. So what that is for the district, uh, Oceana Dunes District operates under a coastal development permit that included entrance stations and permit fencing back in 1982, and there's been some amendments since then that have kind of implemented some operational practices. So the PWP is kind of a long-range planning document for state parks to use in the future. Um, what it's going to address is existing conditions, um, where we are, where we're at, uh, what we would like to uh, um, what would like to accomplish. Um, it's going to address land use management practices, um, programs um, to improve access and recreation. It's going to include some specific improvement projects um, that we have highlighted um, on our, our website and all of our materials that you've all uh, seen through some of these public workshop uh, plans. And ultimately, it will uh, replace the existing CDP, the 1982 Coastal Development Permit that we've kind of been working under all this time. So we have a lot of cool projects. So what the POVP is going to do, it's going to allow state parks to kind of set existing policies, uh, existing guidelines, um, goals, and allow for the district to put all of these practices uh, opportunities, recreational opportunities, improvements into a document for review and approval. And once approved, basically that gives the departments the flexibility to work in, work within this approved document with all these plans and projects already reviewed, um, including a CEQA and environmental review, and allows the department to implement changes, make operational maintenance projects, updates, at the discretion of the department staying within that framework of the public works plan. It eliminates the need, right now in our world, <clears throat> in a coastal environment world up and down the state, if you want to um, put in a new structure, uh, we have real estate agents here tonight that know we all live along the coast, so we know the, the influence of um, the Coastal Commission and what's required. So uh, if you want to put in a new structure, um, we need to go through what's a coastal development permit for that permit. That permit process is not burdensome, but it takes a while. So if you stack all these changes and plans and unknown objectives, but within kind of an operational uh, framework, if you put all those individually, you know, permitting process is, you know, burdensome and extends 
for a long time and makes work um, very difficult and challenging to accomplish goals in the time frame. So the PWP will include all these projects for maintenance, ongoing improvements, and it will allow us to implement those projects on our timeline. So yeah, I know you say you don't want to talk about all of them, but we do have some cool projects. So we have some uh, site-specific project that is at the um, Butterfly Grove. So we've got some cool opportunities that I think will impact me and Oceano. Um, we have our uh, boardwalk project, and that would be connecting Grand Avenue with Pier Avenue, and ultimately connects the community of Oceano into the city of Grover Beach, into the city of Dismal Beach, using that existing boardwalk. We have some, we have also Flacco. Uh, we have a, a project there that's we're planning on uh, campground improvements and uh, facility improvements for that area. Currently, it's just a, a big use area, just come and park and enjoy the area. Um, and then we have some other things sprinkled in there. We have our operation yard, where we have all our staff doing the work that gets done in the park that's required. So we have some improvements that we'd like to see there. Um, we have some campground improvements. We'd like to include upgrade uh, the Oceano campground with um, uh, new asphalt, maybe realign the campgrounds, include sewer to some of our RV hookup sites, uh, improve the power that's out there in the water. Um, so we have a lot of, lot of site-specific projects, as well as just kind of other general um, maintenance projects. All this information, so we had our last public workshop, public workshop, public works plan workshop was held in December. So we had one in uh, uh, Oceana, or excuse me, one in uh, Grover, and uh, one in, um, where did we go? Asia. Yeah, and so all those materials from the December meeting are available online. So we have a, a website just specifically for our public works plan. And that is OceanoDunesPWP.com. Uh, repeat, you please. That. Could you just repeat it? What's that? Channel. Just repeat the website. Oh, yeah. It's OceanoDunesPWP.com. And then, of course, we have our own website. Uh, if you have trouble remembering anything, just go to you know California State Parks and just search Oceano Dunes. And then our website will come up, um, which is ohb.parks.ca.gov. And from there, you can link to our public works plan. And it has all the documents from the meetings. Um, it will have all of our uh, kind of summary of public comments received uh, to date from those December workshop meetings. Uh, for your reviews, so all this information is online. Again, you can add yourself if you're not already there. Add yourself to the uh, email distribution list. So that way, when there's a new update or information, uh, you're on our email list. Uh, we had a public comment period that closed um, late January. But I would gather that if there's still valuable feedback, that we would love to receive all that feedback. So please don't be scared of missing any public comment period. If you have information, send it into the website and the email addresses that uh, are provided on that, that website. We plan on, let's see, um, Bonnie mentioned we'll be back in front of Coastal in April for our um, next quarterly update. After that, we are planning on having a, um, a draft public works plan out for the Coastal Commissioners as well as the public for review. So look for that in the summer of this year. And of course, as um, Bonnie mentioned, we'll be going to uh, Coastal Commission. I believe we've agreed on the September calendar, I believe, um, for the San Luis uh, meeting for the public works plan review. So yeah, look for um, look for something coming out in the summer. Again, add yourself to the email list uh, so you can get notice when that is released. Um, look for that draft plan coming out. Which we'll have a lot more information for you uh, to review and to consider and to provide feedback on. That's kind of a quick nutshell of PWP. Um, so specifically for Oceano, I would imagine that um, Oceano campground improvements will bring in and support the community as far as tourism and um, activity coming in and out of Oceano Campground. Um, the boardwalk certainly will be um, a, a cool project, uh, adding um, access to an area that is uh, limited already just to foot traffic. 
Um, so certainly open that area up between Pier Avenue and Grand Avenue. So we're pretty excited about that one and hope that one gets the support and, and makes it through the process. Um, and in the PWP, uh, I think one of the um, questions or comments from Coastal Commission was access and um, entrance, entrances. So I think we're still anal analyzing, but we're analyzing and uh, moving in the direction of recommending the permanent entrances at Pier and Grand Avenues. Under our CDP, it's, uh, those have been termed interim, so there's that kind of outstanding, you know, what's permanent, are we still looking for something else? Repeat, please. <laughs> Repeat this last sentence for me. I, I'm very hard on hearing it. In, interim designation from the CDP? What, what about P Avenue and Grand Avenue? What P did you say? Say it again. The PWP, the Coastal Commission asked, you know, review the access routes. There's the uh, CDP comment about um, interim access. So we're reviewing and analyzing those in existing entrances, right? And so uh, we're likely analyzing and reviewing those and um, looking to uh, identify those as uh, likely, through that analysis, likely permanent resident uh, access points, as well as continuing to identify that much needed southern access route in some other location through some other property some other time when it presents itself. So the department recognizes we need to try and find a southern access. Um, we don't know where that is yet, and we'll continue to review it for that opportunity uh, as it presents itself, and that's through either land acquisitions or um, through existing properties. So that's undetermined, and so that's still being reviewed right now. Through, that kind of leads me into, I don't know, operational, but I can stop right, well, I'll continue through and kind of switch gears into some of the uh, questions you kind of proposed for operational and management uh, questions. So you had asked me about park fees. So um, Pier Avenue and Grand Avenue are the entrances onto Bismo State Beach and Ocean Dunes, SBRA, right? If they come on the beach, drive south to get to the SBRA, to the riding area. So a day use, a Pier and Grand Avenue are day use areas and those uh, collect fees at the gate and those are, uh, it's five dollars um, for to get on the beach per day, right? Park closes at 11 o'clock, uh, you come in for the day, uh, hang out, enjoy the park, go do what you want to do, go surf, fish, go ride, just go walk, uh, it's five dollars. Uh, camping down at the beach is uh, currently ten dollars, I'm not sure if everybody's familiar with that, so it's ten dollars to stay overnight. And for the day use numbers, um, our, can, kind of we point back to our, our existing CDP or Coastal Development Permit. Um, in that CDP, we've identified some kind of carrying use capacity numbers. So for day use, that's uh, that number that we operate under is 2500, 2580, um, and that's day use. And when we say day use, that's a vehicle coming into the park at Pier and Grand Avenue. And so we track those, our key our park aides, our staff that collect your money at the gate and, uh, you know, welcome you to your park maps. Um, they provide you, uh, they collect that $5 and they, you know, document a vehicle in. And so, yeah, that one day use ticket is for a vehicle. So that's either, you know, me coming in in my truck, which is myself, or me pulling a truck with a trailer coming in for the day and there's, you know, five people in the park. That's, you know, day use is one, one vehicle is how we our capacity or units. Um, for camping, our camping number, did you have a question? No, oh. no, I'm just... Uh, for camping, our camping number uh, was at a thousand campsites, right? And again, that was in units, uh, and a unit was a vehicle. So again, that's me coming in, camping, and staying the night. I need to call up Reserve California and get a camping pass, and that's $10 a night, um, and that gets me on the beach for the overnight. Uh, it could be, again, me pulling the trailer and having the, the RV or the motor home behind. Um, again, $10 a night, so, you know, great bargain, great opportunity in the, in the area. Great access opportunity for, uh, for the public. <clears throat> that number, we recently did our projects in the, in the writing area. We did a project for APCD, um, and that was another, another agency that we uh, are working with. Um, outside of Coastal Commission, right? It's independent of. So we did a project for 48 acres. So at this time, um, from that impact, we at the time and currently reduced the camping opportunities, camping units down to 500. So right now we've um, 
basically cut our inventory in half and cut the opportunities in half and cut the access and for the overnight accommodations in half. So we're working at 500. Now, if we find that operationally, we still have plenty of space for our campers to spread out and enjoy the area, then we still have flexibility to adjust those numbers, uh, either up or down, depending on impact. So uh, when you come in for camping, our current number is 500 units. And again, that's per, per vehicle. So I know that was a question that you had uh, proposed that you wanted to, wanted to be addressed. In addition to that, so we have the camping use numbers, we have the day use use numbers, and then we have OHV or off highway vehicle use numbers. And that, uh, that number is 1700, 1780 specifically. And um, that again is uh, tracked at the park entrance. So back to day use and the OHB uh, use, specifically just day use. You know, we have 2,780 units available to come into the park, and um, the uh, you know I don't know if what kind of picture in your mind 2,700 brings. I don't know if that's you know thinking that you know there's still a lot of room on the beach or if it's you know too much, um, but we typically only sell out the park to day use. Traditionally, it's just two days a year, and that's usually Memorial Day weekend, sometimes, um, and 4th of July, pretty much every 4th of July. So those are our really biggest use impacts where we see that um, sold out campground or the use area, um, and we reach those use numbers. Other than that, typically um, our numbers are, you know, summer weekends, we're usually in the 2000, 2200 range for day use vehicles. And of course, we, uh, weekends are usually sold out during the summertime, well in advance, right? Six, six months in advance. But you, you asked about street sweeping. So I know this is, again, this was kind of something that came out of our um, uh, partnership relationships with APCD and discussions with them. So the Air Pollution Control Districts, uh, the San Luis Obispo County Air Pollution Control Districts. Uh, we um, entered into a stipulated order of abatement, and some improvements that we made through that process is that we, uh, you know, we've always been doing some street sweeping, but through that process, we improved our street sweeping <coughs> operations. Uh, prior to about a year ago, we, were, we State Parks was sweeping um, our camp park entrances. Uh, we were sweeping those three days a week. Um, we had a contract in place for a contractor to street to sweep Pier Avenue, and that was uh, two days a week. And then uh, the county operates and sweeps uh, the other section of Pier Avenue. So, State Parks sweeps basically the entrances around Pier and Grand Avenue. Up at Grand Avenue, we also sweep the parking lot that's in the Finns parking lot on the asphalt there. At Pier Avenue, we sweep up to our kiosk. Sometimes we go a little over. Sometimes um, we stop at, uh, at our property and we contract with the contractor to sweep from basically Strandway to Air Park. And so out of our APCD agreements um, and you know, operational changes, we went from, uh, State Parks went from three days a week to five days a week at Pier Avenue and Grand Avenue. And then our contract for that Strandway to Air Parkway uh, was increase from two days a week to three days a week. So you, she and I have talked about this before, but uh, um, so State Parks invested in a uh, PM10 compliant street sweeper a couple years ago. Pretty big investment by us, and we have heavy equipment operators that operate that machinery. Um, and then our contract expired last year, and we wrote a new contract for a two-year contract for three days a week, increasing that street sweeping operation. Um, and that contract was uh, just over hundred thousand dollars, about one seventeen. And then, like I said, the county sweeps from Air Park Drive to Highway One. Uh, and I'm, I think they sweep once or twice, a couple days a week. I'm not really sure about the county's um, commitment to sweeping that stretch of the roadway. And of course, sweeping depends depends largely on seasons and visitation and impacts. But um, those are our that's our framework that we work under. You asked about uh, 
grading. So we don't grade, but I know it looks like grading, but what we do is we maintain those ramps. Obviously, um, our visitors need access onto the beach to enjoy their recreational opportunities. So we do that Monday through Friday as conditions require. Um, and that's primarily to maintain that open access, remove that soft fluffy sand that builds up at the bottom um, and maintain those areas. And we do that on an ongoing maintenance um, basis. Uh, you asked about staffing. We've had better staffing numbers in the past. Currently we have eight uh, we have uh, eight rangers. Uh, in addition to those eight rangers, I have two what we call supervising rangers or sergeants. Um, and I have one captain, and then I have myself as the chief ranger. So currently we have 12 uh, peace officers. Obviously I don't get it out and patrol as much as I, um, as I would in the past. Um, so basically on a day-to-day -day basis, we have eight guys and gals on patrol spread out throughout the week. So. For me, what that looks like, um, it's basically, you know, I have eight rangers to cover the week, right? So I split them in half, so that's four rangers for each end of the week, and then four rangers to split a day shift and a night shift, so. Um, but good news is coming. We have uh, an academy that's be, gonna be graduating here at the end of June, so we'll be getting some cadets out of that. I'm not sure how many yet, but um, we'll be looking to get some additional staff there about help out our guys on patrol. Um, we just went through some hiring for our seasonal lifeguards, which um, are in the towers during the summertime and in our patrol vehicles during um, the summer and our off season. And they provide support to our park visitors with you know providing medical care, emergency responses, and other operational needs. You asked about our kiosk hours, and typically those run it. It varies seasonally. Uh, we typically run those campgrounds generally from 8 o'clock until 10 o'clock um, during the season, midweek. Maybe that, maybe those hours are only 9 to <coughs> 7, 9 to 8. It really depends. Um, we have uh, periods throughout the year, our, kind of our peak holiday periods where we operate 24 hours a day for that period of time. <coughs> we have park days and rain stuff. <coughs> On, uh, 24 hours for those anywhere from two to four nights, depending on how long that weekend is. You also asked about <coughs> how do we track? How do we track people? How do we track vehicles? Yeah, so it's not a real high tech system, but it's certainly working for us. So part of our um, obligation and to manage our operations, we just want to know how many people are in the park. So for camping, it's pretty easy. We have um, our campers come in and they make their reservations with Reserve California in advance. Depending on how many reservations we have available, we have sometimes walk-up reservations that are available to make uh, if we have room. So if we're sold out on the summer weekends, um, then we're sold out, we don't allow any walk-up reservations because we don't have the capacity to do that. So we track campers through our Reserve California numbers and those are printed out to my staff every morning and we check in the campers as they come in. And we also register new campers within the uh, park uh, that day. So we have a good track on our campers. Our campers are identified by specific camping passes so our people on patrol know what to look for and uh, know how to um, know how to search for compliance and check for compliance on either a camping pass or a day use pass. So with the campers also comes the vehicle counting, right? It's kind of goes one 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 hand in hand. Um, but we do also track vehicles through, and that's again, our kiosk staff is working. They're entering that number into the, into the registers, and we have those reports that are ongoing, and we tally those at the end of the day. Um, Grand Avenue closes at night at 11 o'clock for day use, and the period avenue remains open. We operate a campground. Obviously, we have to keep access open for our visitors to come in and out, get groceries, attend to emergencies, come in late if they're on the road from out of the area, um, as well as still provide for public access and public safety access. So um, when the kiosks aren't staffed, uh, we have counters that are at Grand and Pier Avenue. We have counters that are, you know, just real, you know, 
old school uh, vehicle counters. So those are tracked and that report number is added in the morning. Our staff checks that the next morning. They check that counter and they add that to the tally for the day. So that's kind of how we track that attendance. Um, again, I said day use uh, closes at 11, so Rangers on patrol. They are checking for passes and um, looking for that kind of that window when day use is over and campers are remaining and they're looking for those um, those passes to make sure that we have um, that we allow for those vehicles and visitors to leave and make sure that they don't have any, you know, they can't stay around the camping pass. Uh, you asked about concessions. <clears throat> so we currently have four OHB concessions that operate ATVs and ROVs, and we have one uh, sun buggy that also operates and offers an additional vehicle. Um, there are sun buggies. Um, I also have a concession that operates uh, Love to Camp. They provide vehicle trailers for folks that don't have a trailer. Um, and they operate both at the SBRA for the beach as well as Pismo State Beach, North Beach and Pismo, um, North Beach and Oceana campgrounds. We have uh, a tow service that uh, responds and helps our visitors. Um, we have our beach store pump out service and fire delivery, um, that's the open hand boy. Uh, we also <clears throat> have um, an additional touring opportunity, and that's um, uh, Pacific Adventures, and they operate a Hummer tour. Um, and then, of course, we have uh, Bruce Van Gordon Chains up at uh, Grand Avenue that operates um, the restaurant and the golf course. And we kind of we kind of lump Bruce into the Pismo State Beach side of the house, and not the SBRA side of the house. But in total, we have nine concessions that operate under contract with the state. So, small business owners, private businesses <coughs> that operate under contract. That's kind of what I had prepared for you, I'm not sure if that was good enough. Um, just recent updates, um, our HCP, our Habitat Conservation Plan. Uh, some of us in the room have been involved in that for years, so that's finally released. Um, so that is out for public comment right now. Public comment closes April 24th. Um, APCD, uh, through our stipulated order of abatement, we just finished installing, um, let's see, Thursday just one day we just finished uh, our seasonal, our annual work plan, which is installing seasonal wind fencing. So we just installed those two 40 acre parcels, so uh, kind of the open area and just uh, south of, um, just in the Sand Highway 16 area. So we have two new wind fence projects out there. And then again, coastal updates back in April. 15, 16, 17, we have yet to identify which date we're at, but that's kind of what I prepared for you, Lucia. Hopefully that <coughs> kind of hits some of the big pictures, but yeah, we'll certainly here for as Thank you so much, Kevin. Thank, Thank you so much. Uh, I've been very patient. Uh, we've been meeting with us all that. <clears throat> this is the way I would like to proceed. Uh, we, there are a lot of us, so there are some, I'm sure there, are, there will be Yes, ma'am? I have a question for you. No, please. This is what I'm going to okay. right now. All right. This is what I was going That's to explain. Why we came here. So, okay. to get so this is the way I'm going to suggest that we do it. And I think I'm going to try to be fair. First of all, let us not have any personal attack. Let's not yell at anybody. This is, for me, the way we did this is that so state parks really gets to hear what Oceano residents would like to see for the next 40 years happening in their neighbors, because that's our neighbor, that's our beach. So I would like to go around the room in this sense. From me, I'm gonna start to my right, and I'm gonna give permission to people that are sitting around the table. Then to be fair, we're gonna go to people that are on the other row, so that I don't want you to feel like you're gonna be the last people to speak. The first of the first row, and then the second row, and then the third row, if that can make sense, okay? And uh, please let us not interrupt, just like we listen kindly to Kevin, we need to listen kindly to each other. And uh, the things that I would like to hear is that I'm an Oceano resident, and this is what I would like to see. The changes, if any, that I would like to see, for better or worse, and everybody has to listen. 
And please do not take more than a couple of minutes. It doesn't take very long to say what would you like to see for the next 40 years. That's my <coughs> lifetime. So to me, it's very important. So do you agree with that? Yeah, sure. So only your people from Oceania that live in Oceania. Yes, I would like, I would like, if you are not an Oceania resident, please hold up and speak at the very end, to be fair to everybody. So, what I would like to say, and what I would like to see, and I'm just going to speak a couple of minutes. Um, I am a member of the Oceania Beach Community Association. I, my focus is uh, livability, that means to improve uh, the quality of life in Oceania. Accessibility, it means uh, that more people and we, people of Oceano, are able to walk around safely on our beach, on Pier Avenue, in our town. Beauty, that means I'm concerned with the trash, with the aesthetics, and uh, Oceano's cultural diversity, historic culture, and coastal environment. It seems to me that, those, that this mission in order for me to fulfill this mission, I would like to see for the next 40 years that P Avenue is not used anymore as an entrance to the beach and to the off-roading area. We're not talking about uh, shutting down ATVs. I don't care about that right now. For Oceano, I would like to see P Avenue lined with coffee shops, bike racks, Plenty of parking spaces for pedestrians to park and walk on the beach. I would like to see a beach that's safe between a pier and the Arroyo Grande Creek, safe for pedestrians, for people that do not want to have anything to do with cars to recreate. So that's the change I would like to see. Next. My name is Aline, and I'm also a founding member, like I said, lifelong resident of Oceano and very proud, proud resident. Um, for Oceano, I would love to see ditto on everything uh, Ushia said. Um, I love my community and I love my beach and I'm very concerned about the environment of the beach. I would like to see our beautiful dunes preserved. We have some of the you know be most beautiful unique uh, dunes here and I would like to see them preserved. Uh, and the animals, the whales and all that, it's just beautiful, it's gorgeous. I'm blessed to live here, so I really want to see our beach, you know, the environment preserved. I'm very concerned also about how it looks, the entrance. I would like to see it lined, like Lucia said, with coffee shops, more of a tourist. I would like to see it more like uh, every other beach town here in California that's gorgeous, that looks like a beach town. Um, uh, I also want to see Oceano uh, remain the character, the historical character, to stay the same. I don't like the gentrification to where everything's modern and they don't care about the history of a town. So basically, in a nutshell, that's what I'd like to see, positive change for Oceana. Thank you, Lina. Would you like to speak? Yes, I would. Go ahead. My name is Peggy Nally. I speak for my husband and myself. We um, are residents on Strand Bay, We're building a home. I echo and ditto Lucia and Elena's remarks, and I also petition that no boardwalk be built um, adjacent or in front of the Strandway homes. We will lose our privacy, we'll lose our beach access, safety and security, and above and beyond that, I think the pristine beauty of that beach needs to be preserved in its natural state. I grew up on a beach. There's nothing wrong with walking on a beach. I don't know why we need to put in boardwalks anywhere for people. Especially when the boardwalk ends at the staging area and there's nothing further down there. Why do this? Why ruin that view? Why ruin that uh, beauty? Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Would you like to comment or have a question? Okay, I have a question. I have heard that there is like tons of sand that comes off of the beach, stuck onto the underside of the cars, then gets swept up, and it goes to the dump. Something like 40,000 pounds a week. 40 tons a week, yes. However, a lot. Is that what it is? And that 
I don't know the exact math. I think Lucia and I went through uh, conversations. I think she has, you know, roughly some pretty good figures. Four times a week. And that's, of course, dependent, right? So when she, Lucia and I asked this question about a year ago, um, you know, when our main staff street, uh, sweep the streets, there could be a day where they pull out, um, you know, the capacity of that sweeper is about four, to four, uh, four yards. So um, on average, we uh, we say about three and a half yards of sand per uh, per day. So, but again, that's seasonal, right? So, I mean, during the summertime, uh, when we have the winds blowing, we're probably hitting that three and a half uh, <coughs> yards a day. During periods like now, or not now, but uh, October, um, September, November, we might not be sweeping on a day because there's no sand out there. So we're not taking any sand. So. It's hard to say what the exact number is, but yeah, in general, we, we say that we're sweeping about three and a half yards per trip, and then three and a half yards equates to just over five, uh, will be about five tons. So yeah, if you extrapolate that math, then um, you know, I think the, based on that, it's just, you know, I would just caution that that's an average, right? So, but certainly that's, yes, that's the process. So why is it so cheap to come here whenever going to Sequoia and all those places is so much more money? Yeah, it's a good question. I and don't, we, I, that doesn't seem right to me. Yeah, it's, uh, we recognize um, the OHP Trust Fund is, uh, the OHP Division, um, well, well, that should be a great one. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I was going to say that. So. I was going to say Ocean Division, but so State Parks operates Ocean Dunes districts, and Ocean Dunes SBRA was operated and managed, still is to an extent. I won't get into the um, organizational minutia with you, but um, through OHB Division. And OHB Division is funded through OHB Trust Fund. And OHB Trust Fund is funded through uh, your fuel tax um, for um, a, a study that was done many years ago. It's funded through green stick fees, park entrance fees. Um, and so our users, everybody that comes to the beach, um, they basically pay into the system already. So we've always recognized that, and we always recognize that we offer an incredible bargain. So we offer a great opportunity for people to come to the park, to get on the beach, to enjoy the recreational opportunity, wherever it is, uh, for a very low cost of coming on the beach. Because you're right, come here for five bucks a day, go down to Orange County, you're paying 30 bucks to park in a parking lot, and you have to walk to the beach. So we recognize the value that we provide for offering coastal access to anybody that wants to come to this park. And that also carries over to our camping opportunities. Again, 10 bucks a night, it's a huge bargain. It provides a lot of opportunities for a lot of families, a lot of people to come to the park, enjoy the coastal access, uh, enjoy the coast, whatever the recreational opportunity they want to pursue. Um, and uh, we recognize that and we value that. So is there room for addressing um, uh, increase in fees, certainly there is, and maybe it's time, and we haven't changed fees in a decade, so maybe it is time for us to review fees, and that's certainly something that many in the department have been talking about, but um, currently, yes, we have very bargain rate fees that provide an awesome experience for our visitors when they come to the party. Thank you, Kevin. Do we have a question or a comment? No, to add from what I've already heard. I'm a resident of Oceano, and the only observation I had made uh, recently has been during peak times of coming and going it sounded like you said that Pier Avenue was open 20 is open 24 7 to allow access and there are times when people are all trying to come or all trying to leave where the roadway that goes down Front Street or Highway 1 I live on Highway 1 is impacted and I worry about our fire and emergency response, police and fire getting out of there. And so it gives me concern when you talk about um, that already it's the only access point, it's a pinch point, and then um, if, if they were to close on some, if, if it is being considered to close Grand Avenue, that that would even magnify that. And it gives me concern that that's looked at. Sure. So yeah, so I know that we there was a proposal out there in the discussion. It's just the concepts, the public work plans con are concepts still, right? We're still we we're accepting public feedback um, through January twenty fourth, and then still again, I, I'm here. I'm listening. But if you want to provide feedback, please go to our webpage and submit your emails and provide that feedback.
So certainly that's one of the goals about that southern access and southern entrance is to alleviate a lot of that traffic and improve kind of access for our visitors that want to go into the SBRA. So that's, I mean, we certainly recognize that we would, we would like to see a southern access and that's still on the table for us. Um, just to try to review and, and identify where that might be. Thank you. Sir, question, comments? Yes. <clears throat> My name is Bob Liga. I've lived uh, on my street for 42 years on Oceano Beach and I'm very excited about having improvements by the Parks and Rec to put in a boardwalk. Um, as some of us get older uh, it's kind of nice to be able to be able to walk down and walk on a boardwalk and sit and watch the sunset. Uh, right now I mean we've walked for 42 years on that beach and it's nice but Still, it's not, it's, it's something that gets more difficult in time. Plus, I think it will improve both the rental community and everybody else that lives there will enjoy that, especially a lot of those cutouts they have and stuff on the other side of Pier Avenue going up to Bismo. I think all of that looks really cool. But I talked to a number of people on our street uh, on Juanita Avenue and most of us are pretty excited that, that we might get those improvements, because we don't get very many down there. And, uh, you know, on the short haul, if they don't want to go down in front of the, the homes, which I think they should, you know, if they go from Pier Avenue North, that's fine too, but I, I'd like to see it all over. Thank you. How about you? Yeah, my name is Vincent. I'm the one that was neighbor, but, um, yeah, I'm in agreement. I, I like the idea of the boardwalk. Um, my question is, are you actively looking for a entrance south at this point, or is it just a topic for discussion? Yeah, currently we're not actively looking. Certainly, we're. Uh, that's part of this whole process. Is um, you know we recognize that there's that access need, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, so are we looking for property? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm always looking for ideas and sure. um, me personally here is an operation, um, and then that's you know we'll continue to review that and develop that concept for our PWP. But um, do we have um, real property staff from Sacramento engaging with landowners? Um, no, 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 no. This one's just a topic for conversation. Yes, sir. Thank you. Hi, I'm Cindy, and I have been coming here since I was nine years old. My parents own a home on Strand in Utah. Um, I live there now, and I'm a resident, and I am so grateful for this beach. Our family, three generations, has been going into those dunes and having the best time of their life. I did it when I was nine years old up till now, and my kids do it, my grandkids are there. We are so grateful for this beach. It's an amazing beach. It's an amazing place for vac vacationers. Airbnbs go very well here. People love coming here, and I pray they never shut down the beach, because the beach has so many memories for so many of us, and we love it, and I'm so, glad that no one's ever shut this beach down and they've been trying to shut this beach down probably since i was nine so i'm grateful that it's still moving going forward and people are enjoying and loving it like i did so thank you, thank you. no please don't don't do that just, just, just let's keep on going so everyone can take justice i'm just going to be real quick sorry. no that's fine no you, when you mentioned the boardwalk you, you just said pit, um, grand avenue to pier avenue there is a, so but is it is it something that's really actively so yeah that was my mistake so yes the idea of the boardwalk on um, the concept that the, the final preferred concept that we uh, have out right now is yes uh, grand avenue pier avenue across pier avenue uh down south um through south towards strand and then uh, connecting or maybe over the over at the uh the levee there yeah you're down in there? Yes. Okay. Jim. Uh, Jim Colvin, I live in uh, Oceano. Um, fell in love with the dunes in Oceano in June of 1977. Um, for many years there, uh, uh, I was living out of the area, 
but I bought a house here because I loved the area so much I wanted to get a foothold. We have, we have three sons. We would camp in the dunes down by Pole 6 uh, one weekend per month for mm -hmm. years and years and years. Absolutely loved it. And like Cindy said, uh, we joined uh, many friends uh, um, uh, to enjoy the dunes and the beach. Now, I've got a jurisdictional question, uh, I've got a concern, and uh, I also have a, a comment concerning uh, reservations. Um, jurisdictionally, um, I mean, we've got the APCD, the California Coastal Commission State Parks, the three major players. <coughs> Is there a hierarchy? I mean, does state parks have to kiss ass to the <laughs> Coastal Commission, to the APCD, or what? Well, we, state parks work. <clears throat> Sorry to be gross in my language. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, so state parks works with all of our partners, right? So every, what we call control agency, has certain requirements that we need to comply with, right? So we work with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for our California lease term um, and snow clover and our protections, and that's kind of what the mechanism of the HCP is addressing right now. Um, so they are, we work with uh, the National Marine Fisheries and NOAA on endangered species like the Tidewater Goody and Steelhead Trout, I think AG Creek. So they have, um, <coughs> they have clients and concerns and they have uh, guidelines for us. Uh, then of course, our San Francisco Air Pollution Control Districts with air quality, Coastal Commission, obviously we're a coastal park, coastal unit, you know, we have uh, coastal compliance, coastal life compliance we need to address. Um, so yeah, we, 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 answer to, we answer to and we work with a lot of masters. I see answer to, I don't see much working with. I see state parks fighting, clawing to comply with the suggestions of the Coastal Commission, the suggestions of APCD, etc. Uh, and uh, you know, I looked at the law that created the Coastal Commission. Uh, it, it's part of uh, Chapter 20 and Section 31,000. You know, point five is. is oh, okay. This this is Oceano. I'm, I'm speaking of, and and Oceano is a Coastal Committee. I mean, community, and and um, that. That portion of the law says it's the requirement of the Coastal Commission that they maximize access and that they maximize recreation. Yet the Coastal Commission just recently uh, went on record saying they don't want any vehicles on the beach. Yes. And, and You're three minutes over, Jim. Would you may I give him my ten? I'd like him to finish. May I give him my ten? No, please. Yes. Uh, yes. Well, but, but you like what he's saying, so you're setting him up. Okay. You know, I, I, I uh, echo the, um, the sentiment of the, the two people who, who expressed that we love our neighbors, we love the recreation we're able to do out there. Um, uh, by the way, Mac Mullen, I'm a resident uh, in Oceano, I live on Strand in Norfolk. Um, and uh, I appreciate everything that, that, that you guys are doing out, out there to, to help us keep our recreation area uh, safe and running. Um, I, I appreciate hopefully making uh, Pier and, and Grand as permanent entrances. I would hope that that would come with improvements. Uh, to the entrances, uh, such as you know, possibly widening, improving roads, adding signage to the roads. There's a lot of people stopping where they shouldn't stop, and things like that. And I hope that a lot of those things get addressed when we make those permanent entrances. Um, and uh, I, I really just hope that we are able to expand our riding area for riding for rider safety. Um, and uh, I appreciate the fact that uh, the the fees haven't gone up, and that. Anybody, no matter how much they make, can afford the five to ten dollars to come to the area. And I think it's it's really awesome. We love the area, and uh, hope we can do it for everybody. Thank you very much. Yes, 
I'm April Smith, I'm a local real estate agent as well, and before I lived in Oceano, I used to come here and camp. And I absolutely love the area of 4 by 4 ing camping out in the dunes. It was a blast, so much to the point where we moved to Oceano. We live on York and Strand. We're homeowners. We absolutely love it. Um, I would love to see the OHV use and the current camping and day use, those numbers at least protected so that it's not cut down further. Uh, possible uh, opening up of some of the closed area that we can you know, provide a good space for people to recreate safely. And uh, I am worried about the impact of the local economy of us shutting down even more and uh, even in real estate sales as well. I've seen a lot of people starting to you know, navigate other directions for wanting to purchase their second homes. And you know, part of that is cutting down on the OHV use. Um, I echo that I think we need to keep both of the entrances and add a southern. Thank you. Any comments? I have to ditto with her. She did on everything. Thank you. And I got to go with my wife. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I do live in Oceana. Great. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I'm an Oceana resident, so you're up little. And I just want to address a couple of previous comments. First, nobody's advocating to close down the beach or close the dunes. We just want to, at least for the beach here in Oceano, transition to more passive uses so that we can have a safe beach and have pure having that. Uh, so that we can be a normal beach town instead of looking very depressed. Uh, the economic impact report that has been waved around by state parks has been debunked by a Cal Poly professor for flawed methodology. Uh, there's never been an independent peer-reviewed study of the economic impact of the ODSPRA. And that sort of study would need to consider the opportunity costs that we're experiencing in Oceano because our main beach street is used as the main vehicle entrance to the dunes. We're not seeing a lot of economic activity from that. And there's no town in California on the beach that is suffering because they don't allow driving on their beach. Ours is. <laughs> so uh, I would just like you to please you know what? do what the Coastal Commission is recommended that you I'm gonna have to get ask you to We're say. interrupting the meeting. Don't pull that off, please. Thank you. I know you people that are no residents, please be patient. <laughs> Go ahead. Your turn. My name is Fabiana Rigo. <coughs> I live here for 33 years. I walked once with my dog on the beach all the way to the vehicle area. I was scared for my life. And the vehicles do not want pedestrian there. They pretend to run you over. <laughs> it's totally toxic. And I'm wondering, do you have numbers? How many people get injured, how many people die there? Is there any number available? I would be interested. We're talking about safe recreation? No, this is not safe. There is no safety for, for walking on the beach. These are our beach, and it gets hijacked by people mostly out of town. And it's insane. It's absolutely insane. If someone really walks all the way back there, my dog didn't eat for two days. She was so traumatized. Don't take the dog. Yeah, please. <laughs> you know, if I catch and see who you are, I'm going to ask you to leave. Because How about you agree that they will not interrupt people nor be nasty to each other. How about taking my children there? It's dangerous. State Park cannot control the firework going on all year. It scares the wildlife, it's poisoning the air, the beach, the ocean, it's all toxic. And I would like to have an answer to this. How safe it is, how many deaths, how many injuries, and the toxicity level. This is not safe recreation. Five dollars, ten dollars for camping? How about Oceano community? An impact, economical impact? That's a joke. 
I would like to have this question answered. Thank you, Verona. Uh, now we're going to go on, on the next row. Bonnie? I'll give up. Hi, thank you. Um, Oceano resident, property owner since 1978, multiple property owner. So um, I'd like to use my time to ask a couple of questions rather than tell you my goals. So one is, if I heard you correctly, you said there's a limit of 2,800 vehicles for day use, 1,000 camping that I think you said reduced to 500. I'm going to ask you, I'll use the word maximum. So what would be the maximum number of vehicles allowed on a state beach at any one time? So uh, our day use number is 2,500, 2,580, so yep. not 2,800. Uh, so yeah, so we have potentially like a 4th of July weekend, we're sold out for camping. No, no, I know. So what would be the so maximum? 500 units, and it will be sold out for day use. That's 2,500 vehicles. So we're looking at basically 3,000 vehicles. And then the camping part? No. That's including the Plus camping. the So 2,800 max. Does that, now what about these other vehicles that are commercial ATV or other kinds. How many? What's the maximum number of those vehicles? The concessions that yes, you talked about. Or well, I don't know. I see advertisements about you can rent and ride something to ride the dunes. Is there a limited number of those? Well, we have the four concessions that operate there, so there's a limited businesses that are operating out there. And do they have a maximum number of units that can go on the beach at any one time? No, they have the maximum unit, uh, number of units for staging, what we call their staging areas. Um, and then so they can cycle those in and out depending so on. So is it unreasonable to, for me to say there could be another thousand of these four-wheel drive items? I have the numbers. Oh, okay, then I'll ask later. Then I don't need to ask you. There could be an, as many as 5,300 vehicles on the beach and the dunes, including the ATVs, the day user, and the camping vehicles. 5,300 cars every day driving on beach and dunes. Are you done? Oh, no, I just had another question. So, and that goes from, I'm gonna roughly say the Grand Avenue, which is to me in my head is Grover Beach area, south to, and I'm sorry, I don't know, south to Pasquan Lupe, or I don't know how far south that space is. So are you familiar with the park and kind of the landmarks in the park itself? Well, no, I know Oso Flaco, I know this, so. So, I don't know. so Grand Avenue is kind of the northern boundary for vehicle. I know that one. And that's what the, uh, the unit that we call Pismo State Beach. Okay. And so if you go south from Grand Avenue, uh, you pass Pier Avenue. Yes. And you go south another mile or so. I know there's a staging area. And then you get to what we call Post 2. So Grand Avenue to Post 2 is what we call uh, Pismo State Beach, and that's, uh, we'll say, street legal vehicles. Okay. And then from post two south is where we have the state vehicle recreation area where the OHB activity and camping is allowed. And that extends to our southern boundary, which is just south of post eight, which is north of Oso Flaco. Okay. But then we still have some property, our, our property, the park property oh, yes. still extends south of Oso Flaco Lake, but vehicle activity is uh, right. stopped it, you know, contained within that. Got it. Now, one last real question. Yeah. Has the state park considered any future like ecotourism kind, where somebody comes on some, I don't know, I'll say natural gas electric vehicle to go drive, see items, not necessarily themselves personally operate. Well, we see that now, right, with people operating those uh, yes. motor-assisted beach cruisers. Um, I don't see it a lot, but there's electric OHVs out there. Okay. So. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, this person wants to take her... I'm going to take my turn back. Um, I'm going to clarify a few things. One, uh, she was right about the economic study. It's been debunked by uh, a California um, professor, and you can read online all the reasons why. We would love to have a comprehensive study done that tells you all the costs and all the benefits. We'd, we'd love to have. That's very expensive, uh, uh, and we can't certainly afford it. Um, the sand coming off the beach, they would like you to, and on to Pier Avenue, they would like you to believe it's blowing sand. You will see that there's almost no sand going into the beach. You will see all the sand is um, coming out of the beach. It's tracked out sand that comes out on tires. It is not blowing. Some is a little bit of blowing sand, yes, but you look at that one side, it's clean. The other side, it's full. You better keep my time here. Um, <laughs> I've been here a long time when I first saw, when I was first lived on the beach, I lived, I worked at the melodrama, and it was, it, you know, it was uh, 
VWs, <laughs> light little VWs and Volkswagens and things like that. Now we have monster trucks, monster vehicles, heavy equipment, heavy equipment grading the beach, grooming they call it, grading the beach, destroying our beach. So for Oceano, I just want Pier Avenue back to us and our beach in front of our Strand Avenue back to us and let everybody come. Let the walkers come, the dog walkers come. What happens down the beach is not of the major concern right now. I just want our little section back. They were supposed to give it back to us 37 years ago, 37, and it's still <laughs> under discussion. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> yes, I'm Nancy Goyle. I live on Strand Avenue, and I've been here. I've been there what 25, 30 years. We used to go up here 50 years ago. I echo the problem about putting a boardwalk right directly in front of our house. I think that's totally inappropriate. It certainly would bring in a, bring in danger that we would we don't need to have. And I think it is a problem also with the grading of the beach all the time, digging up the sand, pouring the sand around. You mentioned there's no grading. There is grading right in front of my house back and forth, up and down, the giant machinery. So it is graded, it is changed all the time, which helps dig up the sand and throw it in there, throw it in the air. And it would be very nice to have some kind of control at night, to do something about the racing pickup trucks back and forth, the, the, uh, the uh, wheelies that people turn, because in the middle of the night, there's roaring back and forth on that beach right in front of my house. And it would be nice to have some kind of control, someone out there at least watching them. But like everyone else, I would certainly like to see our beach at least be back to a beach. It is nothing like it was 25, 30, 40 years ago. It has a totally different environment now, and it would be more appropriate to bring it back to a local community beach, which is what we should have, and which what every other beachfront community in the state has. You're done? Thank you. I'm done. Yeah, I live in Oceano. I think I read somewhere the sand that you're sweeping up. Well, the sweepers is hazardous waste consider hazardous waste is that right uh i know that she had, had sent me an email she's like what do you do with all that toxic sand um, well, i want to know is it toxic what's that i want to know if it is toxic yeah is it? no it's it's deposited in san Marino landfill san Marino landfill wouldn't accept it if it was toxic what, what um, it's, it not deposited, it toxic? it's not deposited back onto the beach because there is we've tested it and there is uh, trace amounts of petroleum hydrocarbons um, of what Petroleum hydrocarbons. Petroleum hydrocarbons that seep into the ocean all, all up and down the coast. Yeah, so that's why, we don't, it, that's why we don't deposit it back in the sand. Sea. That's why it's transported. That's why it's not a problem. The microbes. Huh? I'm sorry. The, the natural seeps along the coast are oil uh, seeds. Uh, petroleum tire seeds. So, so why is this sand, why is the petroleum products in this sand hazardous? Uh, no, the control agency, uh, Jim and Doc asked about the control agency, so we uh, 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 we comply with the state water board, state water, uh, state water quality control board, so that's one of their um, requirements. Kevin, I want to I wanna add to this, the Oceano Beach Community Association is asking for a grant from a state agency uh, to test the sand on a beach, because if it is a uh, if it has a petroleum on the water, we must have petroleum on the beach too. So we're going to test the sand and the water on the beach, and then we will have answers. I think my point is that it's not really hazardous, it's not really toxic. Oh, you don't think it's going to be very hazardous? I don't know. I said I don't think okay. it is. Because we'll have, we'll look at what would happen next on the beach. And we don't hear about it anymore. You don't hear any more about the Gulf of Mexico. Because the bugs, they, they're looking for phantom accumulations of oil out in the Gulf of Mexico. It isn't there. The bugs, they, my point is that bugs will probably eat whatever's in the sands that we're sweeping up here as well. You might want to set them aside and give the bugs a chance. But I don't, I don't think we, you know, we have to be taking extraordinary steps to deal with this. That's all I know. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, my name is Steve Odoni. I rent that here. And um, for a number of years, I remember when I was a little kid, uh, we used to ride the sand buggy <coughs> to Pismo Beach under the pier all the way down to Devil's Slide. And you guys probably know where that is. Years ago, most people don't anymore because they closed off for so long. 
And I just want to let you know that I felt extremely free. And you, you feel like you're, you're, you're free when you're able to drive on that beach. And if somebody wants to walk on a beach that doesn't have cars, all you have to do is go to Grand Avenue and you can walk your legs off all the way to the beach. That's not actually on a beach. Fine, no, please, don't interrupt. Let me tell my time. And uh, I never want to see the beach closed. Uh, I mean, I'm getting up there in age now. It, it kind of hurts me to go up and down the sand dunes. I do it for about two hours and I'm done. But I love driving on the hard packed sand uh, as far as I can go and come back and drinking a cup of coffee. I enjoy that. I don't want to see that go anywhere. Thank you. Have you done, sir? Thank you. How about you? I, um, I'm a president of Blue Channel, and um, yeah, I can't really afford to do the off-roading thing, but I really love the dunes, and um, you know, I use it like as a hiker. So my concern is just, you know, safety and protection of wildlife and all of that. So I, I was disappointed that the draft environmental impact report wasn't at the meeting, the workshop. And do you know why that is? It said it on the, it said it on the front of the brochure, but they couldn't produce it. Uh, for the public works plan. Yeah. Or for the workshop. Public works plan, December. So we started this. The uh, CEQA was started when we initiated in uh, the public works plan, right? So uh -huh. we're, this is all part of that process, and then we'll um, once we have. We're working towards developing the final uh, EIR once the final PWP, the final draft is uh, ready to go. And then at HCP, the Cabotech Conservation Plan is separate, and that's available online on the PWP site right now? No. Habitat, you're right. Habitat Conservation Plan is a separate um, parallel track, kind of inter, inter, uh, connected, but it's separate than Coastal, um, Coastal Commission PWP project. And yes, it was uh, published. Um, you can go to our website, oceanodunes, uh, ohb.parks.ca.gov, okay. and you'll find a link to our HCP. It's, it's, on it's not on, I don't think we, I think we paid for a, a new website to post it instead of going to the state clearinghouse because of uh, new ADA requirements for, um, for reading it. Okay. Yeah, but it's available. Yeah, so my point is if you're going to run a recreation resource that's coastal that, you know, it's like try to compromise with everybody, but also realize that you know, there's all kinds of users and um, I am concerned about the wildlife and the steelhead and the snowy clover and I know they've been run over. How many um, have you had to report to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife that were killed? This year? Yeah. Uh, zero. Last year? Last year, I think we had Gosh, seven, eight, nine, uh -huh. something like that. Okay. You're, you're prior to that, I think we had like two or three, you're prior to that, I think zero. Okay. And um, I think the time is over. Right. No, thank you. Um, I moved to Oceano in 1997 with my three daughters. And um, I was never able, in all the years raising my kids here, I was never able to go to the beach and dig in the sand at my local beach. Because you could walk there, certainly and walk on there, but being able to play with your kids down there, that was never a reality. And I've often wondered over the years why we couldn't have more of an arrangement like you do with mountain bikers on the trails. Like some days it's all hikers, some days mountain bikers are allowed as well. So close the beach sometimes so that we can both do what we like to do out there. Interesting. You could have a car-free beach one weekend a month. Keep it away from high-usage weekends. Um, I get why everybody likes to go out there. Um, I was raised on the back of a motorcycle. My dad's a Navy guy. I've been out there. Um, the truck I was in got stuck, and I experienced tremendous outpouring of help. Um, so everybody was really friendly, and I get why people like it out there. But I would just like to see us be better neighbors, these two groups of people who like to use the dunes us work with each other so that we can both have what we want. I would like to be able to walk on the beach with no cars mm -hmm. sometimes. 
Maybe not all the time. Sure, maybe I would like to, but I'm not going to go down there all the time anyway. You know, just like nobody's going to go out there to use the ATV area all the time. So maybe we could find a way to share it more equitably. Thank you so very much. Please have a question or comment. I'm Gail Esposito, and I live in Oceano. I've been there on Strand Utah for almost 50 years. I was the last house, the only house, for a long, long time. My children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren still play out on the beach. We, the cars don't bother us. They love to go down the beach. We walk our dog out there. It's never been bothered. Uh, as far as the boardwalk in front of the houses, I think that's a horrible idea. Uh, you look at other beaches like Newport Beach and all, you have skateboarders, you have everything out there, and these people they built those houses there for that beautiful sand and that beach. And uh, I hate to see that being taken away from my kids. So I'm totally against the boardwalk. And the cars, I've always, always had them, and pretty much we worked it out very well. Thank you. My name is Lois Cowell. I am a resident of Oceano, <coughs> of Oceano Beach. And I love the cars on the beach. I love watching them every night with the lights on driving up and down the beach, seeing the different varieties of cars on the beach. It's awesome. And we live in the only place in the California that allows driving on the beach. Why would we ever give that away? This is priceless. This is a treasure. We can walk on a beach anywhere. We can walk a couple blocks north and we can walk on the beach. To give away what we have is amazing as it is. And to, to relinquish that, it's a treasure. We're the only place in California that has it. Why would we give it away? Yay. Are you done? I'm done. Oh, one more thing. You know, one thing we could do at the kiosk if we computerize the kiosk, we could make it a little bit quicker for all the cars. I love the lines of cars on the holidays. It, it, shows, it shows me that there's fantastic things happening here on the beach. But we could speed it up a little bit if we computerize it. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm a resident of Oceana. Yes, I do. I would think our treasure is wildlife. I can too. Some of this property. It's a very unique environment. The dunes and the wildlife. And I'd like to see that preserved. I'd also like to see the community prosper as other beach communities have prospered because things are more managed and they're not abused. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. My name is Charles Varney. I've lived in Oceano and owned property for 20 years. Um, a lot of people are talking about driving on the beach, and I don't really think, I mean, that's an issue, but that's not really the issue, people driving 15 miles an hour on the beach. It's more people having a sandbox that they can race in with 400 horsepower you know, off-road vehicles and quads and, all the, and motorcycles and churn up the sand and create silica dust that's polluting the entire Napomo Mesa. Um, I would like to see our community have a beach that I would be feel safe taking my grandkids to. The, um, and I have, um, and if, if cars are so wonderful on the beach, why hasn't Pismo Beach gone back to allowing cars to drive underneath the pier? Why haven't they? If it's such a great boon to a town. You all know if you've lived here long enough that Pismo only really became a recreational tourist destination when they stopped cars from coming on their beach. And and that's pretty documented. The science is clear that, my time's up, no, um, I'm that, yeah. that the, uh, the silica dust coming off the beach is generated in the off-road vehicle areas. Mm -hmm. I do have a question about the EIR on the Habitat mm -hmm. Conservation Plan, and that is, why are steelhead trout not included in that plan? Sure, and we're gonna have a public uh, comment, and that's for a public meeting by the ACP here. 
March or April. It'll be on our website. Great. So we obviously our HCP was built with the US Fish and Wildlife Service and um, they recognized the efforts that we do and they recognized the opportunities that we manage and they did not require it to come Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. I would like to personally see the state of California put a little more money into the area that it's making so much money in. Uh, through helping take care of our streets, the trash overflow, the potholes that we have to beg to have fixed, and there's so much environment going on, so much traffic coming in our little neighborhood. That's a big part of it, but nobody wants to do anything to fix it unless you beg for it. I really resent that. But I also would like on another level to see and put a little money in a beautiful large sign with a beautiful large fish choking on plastic and ask the people to please take their garbage with them. The fish are the ones that's going to pay the price. It's terrible. I, I walk it, I see everything from dirty diapers and worse. So just a sign to remind people that it is a place to keep beautiful. Thank you, man. Uh, my name is Pat Fitzgerald. I'm, uh, um, I've uh, owned a place here for close to 20 years. Anyway, um, I don't think that, that a um, boardwalk uh, to the south of Pierre is a good idea, really. Um, number one, it kind of kind of cuts off all the people that live in the Oceano area, and uh, besides. Uh, uh, bothering um, the folks that um, bought their houses on the beach many years ago and um, have to put up with uh, increased traffic not only out on the beach but right in front of their doors. And uh, also I think uh, you've got to find some sort of a southern entrance to the... Uh, I'm not opposed to Rec recreation vehicles or anything like that. But I think a southern entrance is the best way to um, uh, help some of this stuff along. This kind of stuff along. Are you done, sir? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not a resident. Um, I've been out here, though, at least three or four days a week because of my family. Um, I just wanted to say that it is a safe place to come have fun. My son was going to go to a rap concert at San Luis Obispo last Saturday. He came down here and helped people get more stuck because he's a jerk pilot. <laughs> My name is Danny Hensley. I'm a 50 year resident of Oceano, homeowner, business owner. And I agree, this place should go back to the way it was 30 to 40 years ago. Because back then we could ride our ATCs and our new buggies up Pier Street. <laughs> and we could ride them on the roads. The campgrounds, you could ride into the campground right there. It was an amazing place. We could ride all the way down to Devil's Slide. Another amazing place. The other ac access. Man, uh, Osa Flaco, that was my favorite place as a kid to camp. Because you can drive right through there. We could camp right there by the lakes. And then we could go off, play in the dunes, go down to the beach, drive up and down it. It was an amazing place. I cannot believe that people came and took that away from me. Still bitter about it. So <laughs> there is an easy access. It's just people aren't really willing to give up the fight to make that an access. The dunes are awesome. I grew up there as a kid, obviously. My daughter has spent 30% of her life in that sand playing there. Never has she felt unsafe. You know, she's down there all the time. There is a bunch of kids. The speed limit is 15 miles an hour. We have an amazing group of rangers that make sure that that is enforced. They do a great job. There are way less accidents on that beach than there are on the highways. If you want to go into depths, look at uh, Sequoia National Park or Yosemite. Per person, we have less than half fatalities than Yosemite has. So maybe we should go up there and tell them they need to close that down because there's way too many fatalities up there. So the financial impact of this place, this town is going to get squashed if we close this down. And I find it pathetic that people don't care about my kids and their living because you want to walk a dog on a beach. Some of these are other beaches you can do that on. I've lived here 50 years. 
I remember when most of your guys' houses that you live in were not there. There was Moby Dick's bar right there, the, the biker bar. It was a pretty rowdy place, and it was a lot of fun to watch as a kid. Sand Center right there on the corner. That place was a lot of fun. And I wish it could go back to the way it was yeah. 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. Well, thanks, man. I'm glad I'm not the only one to say I've been here 50 years. So. Uh, I'll tell you, so I didn't move here. I've been here always. Um, my dad came here straight out of Vietnam because he and the two other survivors in his platoon had a conversation and the one guy that he was best friends with said, you need to come to California. My dad said, I will never go to California. They said, you can plant grapes and drive on the greatest dunes in the world. He said, where did we start? <laughs> That's how we got here. These dunes brought my dad here. He's been riding. I've been riding. We've been in those dunes. I've been in those dunes my whole life. My children are in those dunes. My, my whole family has been in those dunes. I remember when my brother, when I was in school, and I don't, I don't want to go back in time, but when I was in school, I mean, Jesus, when I was in school, we used to, I used to come up here and I, I would go in at, at Grover Beach or, or Oceano, um, and, and at that point in time, I'd ride all day, and then uh, my brother, he worked uh, at a steakhouse in Guadalupe, and uh, I'd cruise down there, and uh, I'd get dinner at a steakhouse in Guadalupe for my brother, We'd load up the bikes, he'd take me home, I'd do it again the next day. That was my whole life growing up. That's what I did. It is the greatest thing in the world for my kids. I don't worry about cars with my kids. But you know, there, there are a couple things that I do agree with with you guys. I don't want to see a boardwalk in front of these people's homes. That's, that's awful. I, I would not wish that on anybody. If that was my home, no way. But you know what? OHV is important. It's important to this community. It's important to the kids. What happens when we don't have a spot? When, when there is no OHV, not only does it devastate the community in, in, in a financial impact, how else does it devastate the community? What happens to our kids? What do they do at that point? Drugs? Meth? I mean, that's where we're at. We, we all know this area. I'm sorry, but I'm going to finish. We all know this area. And, and I appreciate Thank you. Um, just give me two seconds. She's good. We all, we all know this area very well. And we all do our parts to keep this community tight. And I'm going to tell you that that OHU community is about the tightest group of individuals that you can get, and they will do anything for anybody, whether it's on that beach, or you're stuck with your kid in the car on the road, we'll be the first ones to get out and figure out a way to get in that car and save that. That's who we are. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Leah Hensley, his wife. I'm an Oceano president and an Oceano business owner. Uh, we spend so much of our time on that beach. We have a four-year-old daughter who comes with us every single time we're down there. And she's on the beach digging. We are feel very safe with all of our kids. All of our rides include kids. I've heard so many negative things about people drinking. We are a sober group. We never run and drink. Uh, we also do the largest trash cleanup that Oceano has ever seen at Oceano Dunes. It's on record. Twice a year. Twice a year. And uh, so much to say, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> and one gentleman said something about birds uh, being ran over. I'm sure that has happened. I have never, and I'm there all the time, from Grand all the way to Six when it closes off for them. I've never seen one dead bird on that beach. Now, is there proof that the birds that you found were already dead or ran over? There's different things and ways to look at that. We also have an idea for weather solved wind fence. This is a wind fence, a real wind fence, that we could build up. That would help, I think, what did you say, Dan? 65% of the sand minimum. stop it, minimum, from going to the Mesa. 35% of our people. Time. There's all different ways that we could all work together and figure this out. Thank you so very much. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you, you want us to talk about our vision? Um, so I, I definitely think that the Pier uh, Avenue entrance should be made open. Um, and it's very nice and you're very fortunate to be able to walk. A lot of people can't. A lot of people have health issues that would, don't allow them to walk from the Grand Avenue to Pier Avenue, whether it's on a boardwalk or whether it's in the sand. So if you can get in your car and drive from Grand to Pier and have your cup of coffee, then you know it's, it's a good feeling and it's nice and you get to enjoy the beach and you get to be part of the community. The reason we moved here is because Oceano is different from every other beach in California. Why would we want to be the same as every other beach? We're unique. We're different. We, we, you know, we have something very, very special, and we need to keep it very special, and we need to keep it in our community. 
And the idea of sharing and making, you know, maybe a day without cars might, might be a good idea. You know, I'm not opposed to that, but don't, don't close it. Don't take it away, you know. If anything, expand it. Put another access road down a little further south, you know. Let people get, it, get in their cars and, and enjoy the sunset. You know, some people have no other way to do that. You know, they walk, can't walk their, to the mailbox, let alone walk, you know, yeah. up and down the beach. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, I've been a resident of Oceano for over 20 years now. Um, I moved up here because it was different. It has a very rich history, and there's a certain group of people that we tend to draw, and it comes from our ancestors, the Dunites. You know, so there's a reason why we've all collected here. When I hear you say, we, we want coffee shops and archaeology and stuff, gentrification is, is the devil. I'm sorry, you know, it has created homelessness beyond control in this country. Nobody can afford housing, you know, nobody's got a job. By having this beach here, it's the only means that working class people can take a friggin' vacation for $10 a day. Where can you go take your family for $10 a day? Not Disneyland, you know, so. But we don't want to see Oceano gentrified, you know? I see Oceano Beach Community Association, and, and it's about gentrification. You need to look up the definition, because you're contradicting what you're saying. You're saying, we want coffee shops and art galleries up and down Pier Avenue. That's gentrification, and it destroys communities. And we came from Venice Beach. We were drove out of Venice Beach. We went to Venice Beach because the rent was reasonable. It's no longer reasonable. And Oceano is becoming the same way. Where is the working class going to go? Avila? <laughs> Thank you. Is it result in Arizona? Excuse me. So now. Did everybody get a turn that is a resident? And now we're going to oh, start. Uh, no, back row. Oh, back row. oh, the last row. Yeah, the last row. Sorry. Yes, the last row. I'm not a resident, so I will go after. One thank you questions. so much. Well, we own property here. We have it. This is our second home. I just want to thank you for all that you do on all your rangers. You are so great on that beach. And you keep us in all safe. My husband grew up in Shell Beach was on the beach and he's a lot older than 50 <laughs> and he rode down this beach that's why we bought the second home here um, my grandkids come children come grandkids are with sand and everything and buckets and i've never felt threatened at all of them. so thank you and thank you folks thank you so very much me i live in oceano and I like the idea of the boardwalk, but I think it should end, I agree it should end up here. It should not go in front of people's homes, but the idea of the boardwalk extending all the way down to, to Pismo and stuff, I think is great. Um, I don't want to see the cars removed. I don't want to see the camping lessened. I don't do any of that. I don't have an ATV. I don't want one, but I don't want other people to lose out either. Um, I think it's great. I am here because it's the only place you can drive on the beach. I don't drive on the beach because I don't want all that sand in my car. <laughs> but it's there if I want to. I get a bus to go out and drive on the beach, I can. But I'm close enough and I can watch people. Like you said, speaking of people going in off of the street would be nice. Sometimes I can't get out of my house or into my house because the camp, they're parked all the way out to Highway 1 and there's no other way in. So that's a pain, but you know, it comes with living at the beach. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things you give up when you live at the beach. It's a beach town. You're going to have sand. You're going to have tourists. Mm -hmm. I lived in D.C. You had tourists. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you, the older residents that want to talk have, have their chance? Mm -hmm. Okay, then now I'm going to go back where? Just to be fair. To be fair. I forgot her. To be fair. You forgot who? You forgot the, her. She's not from here, but she wants to talk. Go ahead. No, we're going to start now the non-residents. 
Yes. She, she is a non-resident. She told me that she wasn't a resident. Right. She is a non-resident. You're both resident. Right, we're going to start here. Oh, and I'm going to go down the first okay. row. And it's your turn. Right? Yeah. Okay. You're going to go here and do she the same thing. Sorry. <laughs> uh, my name is Julie, and I don't live here. Um, I'm listening to all of you, and what I haven't heard is anyone say, close the beach. What I'm hearing is close vehicle access at Pier Avenue. For me, to define that is don't cross the creek with vehicles. And so vehicles would not go down that far. Um, there are, and Kevin, correct me if you're, I'm wrong, there are wheelchairs that are sand wheels available there, are. there, and so people can get on the beach that may be uh, limited in their um, mobility. The, uh, the environmental regulatory agencies that, that you are uh, partnering with, that's their charter. Water, air, habitat. That's their charter, and it's their jobs to mandate that you comply with state law. And the, and the activity that goes on out there is in violation of many state laws. So where the PWP, where I understand it's to go, is that it finds some compromise and that you still will be violating the laws. You're just not going to do it as intensely as you do now. And I welcome that. Um, <laughs> The, because I do think driving on the beach is it you know people like that on but I personally below Arroyo Grande Creek south of Arroyo Grande Creek I have some problems with what's going on out there right now with the orange fencing I think it has a tremendous visual impact that is that is negative a negative impact and I would like you to find another way to do the same job that that fencing does with another color. Because, you know, there's got to be another way. Uh, delineate the perimeter and maybe with orange, but not the whole About darn 25 thing. 25 seconds. Okay. Um, how much does it cost to camp at Oceano Campground? Right now, uh, if you're in a tent, it's going to be $25. And if you're in an RV, it's going to be $35. Okay. And then come summertime, it's going to go up $10 for each of those. Okay, so that imbalance needs to change. That doesn't make any sense. If you camp at Oceano Campground, then that's the same price it should be on the beach. Uh, okay, you're three minutes over. One, one more, if you don't mind. One point. You are law enforcement, and the firework activity needs to be ratcheted down to follow state law also. So I would like you to see that. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Kevin, uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Jeff Edwards, and um, I don't live in Oceano either. Um, however, I have been following this for about 10 years now. Um, some of you may know Larry Bross or knew Larry Bross. He's the gentleman that brought me to Oceano. He brought both of us to Oceano. Um, and frankly, that's why I stick around and, and, and I'm interested in what's happening in Oceano. Um, Kevin, you're familiar with the December 2019 PWP. Um, printout. And in section two, the park wide PWP proposed options, it shows a potential southerly access uh, on your map. You're familiar with that map? And I, I guess I'm trying to understand you've mentioned that parks doesn't have a location, but here right on this map it appears to be a location. In fact, it's at Phillips 66 for entrance and staging as an alternative access. Um, Parks has an existing relationship with, with uh, Philip 66. You lease 600 acres from them now, is that right? Right. Yeah. And this alternative access goes through that very 600 acres, is that, is that correct? The alternative access to a southern entrance? Correct. That's unknown. 
Well, it's right on your map here. Right. Well, so the delineation of that star is there as a general reference point for a southern axis. We don't know where that is. Jeff. Well, it just coincidentally lines up exactly with Philip 66. Yeah. yeah. And you have a relationship with Philip 66. Sure. Yeah. And so, I, are you also aware that that there's already an existing offer of dedication to get the public from the entrance at the at the Tosco Gate to the to the beach? There's already a, a offer of dedication. That was associated with a three throughput project. No, I'm not sure about okay. That. So <laughs> you already have a, a location at Phillips 66 with a public access already prescribed, and as you also know, there's a maintenance road that Phillips 66 uses to service their outfall line, and so you have a road, you have a lease, you have an offer of dedication yet you're suggesting you don't have a location for a southerly entrance. And I'm trying to reconcile that, and that's my question. Sure. Yeah, and I go back to kind of my explanation, is that reference point is, uh, yes, coincidental, because it's just referencing a future southern access somewhere. We recognize we need to continue to look at that and look at those opportunities. So we can't plan for a project uh, on property that we don't own. So that is, uh, yeah, coincidentally, just kind of the location that that star landed. It's just coincidentally right, right there. Your time is up. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to go to the other road. Now, residents, we can have a chance to see the other side. Thank you. 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 Thank um, I live in AG, but I drive through Oceano daily to get home. I stop for gas. I eat far too many tacos. It's a fantastic restaurant. I enjoy shows of the melodrama. I respect the entrances I use to drive on the beach. And part of the beauty of being able to drive on the beach is the access it provides to those who don't have the physical ability to walk. And I'll tell you, those sand wheelchairs are certainly not making it up to the top of the dune to see the beautiful views and take in the ocean air. And I want to see equal opportunity for regardless of your physical abilities to be able to enjoy it out there. I would like to see a southern access point so it's quicker for me personally, honestly, to get down to the beach, but that's also where I'm going to spend my money. So we have to remember there are dollars that come with the dunes. Um, this beach is a state beach, so we really need to be careful when we're saying our beach, because it's the residents of California. This is a California state beach, belongs to California. I've personally heard OCBA board members say that cars should be banned from this beach. And part of the mission, which you read at the beginning, thank you for doing that, is, is sustainability uh, and economics. So what is the plan? Do you have a solid plan for sustainability when millions of dollars are pulled out of the area? And I've heard folks say that the economic study's been debunked. That's not true. One economic studies professor from Cal Poly came forward with his own non-peer-reviewed opinion on the study. And if you're doubting the legitimacy, the legitimacy of the study, SNG Consulting that prepared the analysis served as a member of the Tahoe Regional Planning Agency Pathway Forum Board, charged with shaping the 20-year environmental plan for Lake Tahoe. He received the South Shore Entrepreneur of the Year Award in 2011, and he currently serves as board chairman of the Tahoe Resource Conservation District. So he has twice the qualifications to do an economic study in this area, and even if he was wrong by 50%, that's $121 million still in economic benefit. And I continue to hear we want our beach back, but OHVs have been a part of the community for over 100 years, which is before the commission was formed. So I hear talk of maintaining historical character, but there's nothing more historical than cars on that beach and in those ent on those entrances. And regarding the machines folks have out there and, and being big, bad machines, they are more cleaner and sustainable today just by the manufacture of cars than they ever have been. And I, I would like to see a fast pass lane at the kiosk for at least annual pass holders because I don't think it is fair for folks to stare at traffic all day long in their communities. I live here. I don't like traffic. I moved away from traffic. So I, I, I would love a fast pass lane, would love a second entrance. But just be careful when folks are telling you things. Really look into them. Don't take them at face value because I think we all have a lot at stake here. And we all love this community for very similar reasons when we really get right down. Thank you so much. No, thank you. Thank you. So, um, I think that should we close the meeting? Uh, um, Kevin, is there anything that? Uh, well, we hope. What I would like, what I would like to see is that 
you had a way of recording it because this was a way to hear the ocean of people want it. So if you got an idea, if you got some ideas, that you will be able to report what you heard to the powers of being out there, they make the decisions, right? So I certainly recognize and value in ways that, but for sure, I can't express my um, hope that everybody gets engaged <laughs> and involved and puts this feedback into our um, into the correct resources, which would be submitting your comments. Uh, you, you're not going to be asked. I mean, they, they're not going to ask your opinion. Well, we certainly talk about this in house, but yes, I want to make sure everybody is captured and recognized and valued, and their opinions are are valued. So um, please, by all means, make sure you yes. follow up with emails. Uh, at our uh, website, which is pwp.com. And I have to say how impressed I am that we really did a good job at listening and talking, and I'm just so very happy. And we hope to be, because you know, most of you are my neighbors, so we don't want to fight, and we know I, I don't. Mm -hmm. I, I want to kind of start all over again and try to, to be kind and, and see if there are ways we can work together. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you.